Hey guys, it's TTL back with another rush kit video for you. And today, for the first time, I actually get to say the word Z270 in a video because the NDA has been lifted for the KB Lake and Z270 uh, KB Lake CPUs and the Z270 based motherboards. So we're gonna be taking a look at our first one, which is the uh, new Prime segment from Asus, and it's the Z270A. We're starting here because this is actually the board that I'm going to be re reviewing the CPUs on, on the main OC3D channel. And so if you do wanna go and see its CPU performance, but obviously they've been reviewed on this board, so if you want to see the full review performance of the motherboard as well, you can hit the link that I will attach, and you can go and have a look at them on the main channel. First things first, if we were to open the box, to be honest with you, with the A, it doesn't come with a massive amount of extra accessories and that's to keep the price down and that's one of the reasons why it's at the budget end of the market and it's also the reason why it's the initial board that I use to test my CPUs on and that's, make normally this is the lowest end board that I'm gonna do. So you've got a normal um, uh, metal, you know, nothing particularly special about the IO shield but they do now do it with this soft back, which is kind of nice. They do still have these annoying metal tabs on them though. These are the things I normally kind of bend out the way. But the fact that we've got the addition of the soft touch is a really good thing. You get yourself a couple of SATA cables, CPU installation tool, which I still can't get on with. There's actually a couple more SATA cables. And then really the only other thing is the normal stuff, which is your software CD and your drivers. If you do end up buying it a little bit of time after launch though, and you're watching this video, you know, two or three months maybe after the actual launch date, then go to the ASUS website and download new drivers. But then you do get your manual and your guide if you need to follow this or if things do go bandicoot. So the main reason for us to be here today watching this video is to have a look around of what's on the board and give you a rough explanation of how it uses it as well. And I will try and get it done in a timely enough fashion as I possibly can do. When we look at the board to start off with, one of the things it does say on the box is Aura Sync. Now Aura Sync, there is no um, RGBs on the actual board itself. It doesn't have any extra lights or anything like that, but it does have an RGB header on the bottom down here, which you can use to control uh, external lights that you might want to attach in your case. Uh, and because it's got the RGB sync, it doesn't mean that if you've got an Asus graphics card with RGB, you can uh, control the RGBs on those as well. Let me have a look around the actual board itself. You can see that we've got quite a few, 10 phases up there on the actual, or 10 chokes at least, and then uh, if I can count nine capacitors around the actual um, uh, uh, CPU socket area, as you can see. So it's, the A's, um, they might not be the highest quality components, but I've always been able to squeeze very healthy overclocks out of these. So if you know what you're doing, you don't necessarily have to worry too much about them. When we do have a look around the CPU socket and extend from that point, you can see that we've got a CPU fan and a CPU optional fan here. Over here, we have the AIO um, header, and then we've got the uh, high amp header. So high amp is for very high amp fans, if you're gonna collect, connect loads of fans, and then this one is an AIO header, dedicated AIO header, I should say. Up here, we have a chassis fan one, and then down here, we have chassis fan two. Uh, all of the fans on this board actually um, support the Asus uh, ultra low fan mode and you can pretty much, well you can actually turn them off, but you can actually turn them right down. So if you have a fan that supports a very low RPM, for argument's sake, the Corsair ML fans go from 400 RPM to 2400 RPM. The Asus software now um, with the chassis fans and the CPU fans does allow you to uh, drop those uh, RPMs right, right down. If you use the external fan header, and this is an optional extra on this board, the actual little fan header that goes on it, then uh, you can't use those fans with it, um, but all of the others you can. Other things that we can look, take note of, especially while we're down here actually, is an onboard USB 3 at the bottom and two onboard USB 2s. It does have USB 3.1 around the back, you've got an A and a uh, C. These are actually with an additional um, uh, add-on chip that's on the board, it's not on the chipset. But then you do get your DVI-D and you've got uh, HDMI and DVI there, sorry, um, DisplayPort there 
four USB 3s, gigabit Intel Ethernet. You've got a PS2 port there for those of you classic gamers or overclockers, you know, whatever. Some of us do still use these. And then you've got your digital audio and everything on the back. Crystal audio section down here, which does have the separate uh, like tracer, I want to call it. Um, other things to point out, big point is we've now got two M.2s. Just want to point out a couple of things because there are different types of M.2. You can get SATA M.2 amazingly and if you put a SATA M.2 in a PCI Express M.2 and vice versa, sometimes they don't work. This port here is your main M.2. If you're fitting one single drive, drop it in here. This will support uh, SATA or PCI Express M.2s. Uh, if you put a PCI Express M.2 in there, it does get the full Gen 3 times 4 lanes that you would expect at 32 gigabits a second. If you put a SATA M.2 in here, it takes the SATA number one port away. If you use the one down the bottom here, and this one is up to 110 millimeters, this one is a maximum of 80 millimeters. But if you use the second one down here, this one does not support SATA M.2. But if you use this port down here, what this will do, especially if you're running both, because obviously I said this is first, this is second, if you end up running this one down here, this will actually share the bandwidth with the uh, SATA 5 and 6. Now the, the bandwidth on the SATA 5 and 6 is 6 gigabits per second per port, so a total of uh, 12 gigabits per second, but it will get the full PCI Express time for 32 gigabits a second bandwidth, but what it does as well, because all of these PCI Express lanes are coming from the chipset, because you do get 20 lanes of PCI Express from the chipset, uh, basically what it does is it uses these as well. So we're not sure yet whether they go dead or whether these share all the bandwidth together, but you know, it's just something worth pointing out. Other things to point out about PCI Express. 16 times lane here comes from the CPU. If you put a second graphics card in, they both go to eight times lane. These also come from the CPU. All of the others come from the chipset. So uh, this is a times four down the bottom. It's actually wired as a times eight, um, but it's, uh, it does go as a times four. And also, if you were to uh, use this for an M.2 slot, then this you, you get, have to choose between the two. Um, all of these are PCI Express Gen 1 times, sorry, PCI Express Gen 2 times 1, and these also come from the chipset. Sorry to kind of bombard you with PCI Express stuff. There's, there's always going to be someone that's going to pop up with more questions about it, but I've obviously got limited time and I'm trying to get as much information to you as possible because this is TTL's Rush Kit. Uh, we've also got over here um uh, a power switch and then we've got an, a mem okay button depending on you maybe getting uh, memory issues we'll see if we can uh, zoom you in a bit better zoom 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 there we go so we've got a power switch and the uh, mem okay switch we should have probably done all the fan headers and stuff at that kind of thing so we'll just go around a bit quickly so that you can see all the um all the teeny tiny itty bitty writing and the camera seems to be enjoying focusing today so i am happy oh look that's a nice light effect on the chipset there. I did turn the um, uh, the zoom speed down on my camera so it didn't do it in massive jumps. So there we have it. We've got the uh, Z270A and it's now called the Prime series. I'm gonna probably say Z170 a lot, but obviously they are quite similar, but they've also kind of added extra bits on with the uh, M.2s and you know certain support for other things. This is the, like I said, the entry level one. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of other videos. So look both on the Rush Kit channel if you're looking for something quick to the point and a skim round like this, or if you're actually looking to buy something like this and you wanna spend a bit of time doing some research on it, you wanna talk about overclocking, you wanna talk about actually using it, all kinds of stuff, then you need to go to the main OC3D channel for that because that's where I get chilled out, don't get a dry mouth, and I will talk a lot slower. But for now at least, this has been Tiny Tom Logan having to talk really fast and I've had no coffee, out. <laughs>